Hey, and welcome back. I'm Paul. We're in my garage again, and you can see behind me the arcade project. Now, I'm not bragging, but when over 40% of your subscriber base is begging you to continue a project and post the next video, you have to listen. It's somewhat easier when you have 10 subscribers, but uh, nonetheless, we're going to continue that project. But I got to hold off on doing that for today because there's something on my workbench already. I started a project of repairing this TV that my buddy down the street gave me. Uh, I've done it with my TV before. I don't even know what this is. It's a Samsung. Uh, I think it's a plasma. It might be an LCD. I'm not, you know what? I'm not even really an expert on this, but uh, I'm hoping the issue is the same as the one I fixed. So what I did is I opened the back and it just unscrews. You've probably seen this in the background of my arcade projects. The back shield's off here. I've kept all the screws and everything, all the bolts. They're all right here. What I did is I exposed the control boards in the back. And what I'm looking for is if there are any burst capacitors. I don't know if any of you went to uh, went to shop class in high school, but uh, that's where I learned about this stuff. Side note, that's also where I learned what AC voltage feels like. Shout out to Electroboom. And I figured out how to do a little bit of soldering here and there. Now, I'm already ahead of you. Uh, you'll notice I took two capacitors out. Well, Paul, what does a burst capacitor look like? That's what it looks like. You see how it's somewhat bulging? A new capacitor, one that's good, doesn't bulge out like that. Uh, here's a bigger one. They don't bulge out. And you can see... Focus, focus. There we go. You can see that there's some black leaking out of that. Now, again, I'm not an expert. I don't know exactly what that is. But what I do know is that capacitor is no good. So there were two of those. CM813 and CM803. Why they couldn't be more like CM802 and CM812, I don't know. I don't know what causes them to burst. I think there's just a life cycle to them. A certain number of power cycles. But uh, super cheap part. It's an old TV. But it's a 44 inch. And if I could salvage it, then maybe... The man cave gets a little cooler. It's too big for that. It's not going in there. That's designed for a 32 inch. But maybe somewhere I could hang a TV, get something cool going on. Let's not look up there. All right. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to give you a little top down view of uh, how to take these out. I'll walk you through it. It's not that complicated. Hopefully it fixes the problem. There might be another issue. I don't know, but uh, we'll give it a go. We'll see what we can do. If I can salvage it for the cost of this part. Um, I use Mouser Electronics, by the way. I live in Canada, so I have to pay duties on this sort of stuff. But uh, the parts themselves, 97 cents. So two of these for 97 cents plus $8 in duties. If you live in the U.S., you can save $8 and just pay $2 and potentially salvage a 44 inch TV. So uh, let's see what we can do. Before we do that, uh, you'll see my truck is open here. I went to a garage sale yesterday. And I scored some pretty cool stuff. Let's take a look. Okay, let's start over here for $20. I got this Ryobi drill bit set. Let's see what I got. Let's see if this is a score or not. You guys can feel free to comment. There's some pieces missing. Missing some bits, but uh, certainly a lot more equipped. We've got some masonry bits here. Uh, we got some hardened steel bits here. Actually, no, that might be tungsten. Is that tungsten? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What kind of bit is that? I think that's for drilling through carbon, or for steel, rather. And these would be wood bits. That's my guess. Pretty sure. I used to work in automotive, so. That looks like the kind of bit, tungsten carbide, that you would use to drill through steel. So, 
all those, but wait, there's more. More bits here for wood. These may actually come in handy for the arcade cabinet project. Ooh, some fasteners too, I didn't notice those. Uh, and then some driver bits, always useful. Not too shabby for 20 bucks. Oh, and a whole bunch of extra driver bits, which means I can throw out the ones that are rusted and twisted. Excellent. Next, moving on down the line for $10, I got this old Buffalo bench grinder. You got your grinding wheel on this side and a wire brush on this side. I don't know, I don't have a particular project in mind for this yet, but who doesn't want a bench grinder for 10 bucks? Um, maybe, yeah, let's, let's not show that to the Electrical Safety Authority. Uh, next in line, these guys, jumper cables. Might take those to the, ooh, I might take those to the wire brush and clean off the contacts. These bad boys, two bucks. Deal. Um, clamps, you know I like my clamps. I'm sure plenty of you are concerned about the lack of clamping I'm doing on some of my arcade cabinet work, so that should help. Uh, oh, those were free. She threw those in as a freebie. Thank you, Nancy. I uh, got a articulated ratcheting I don't actually know what the proper term for that is. Ratchet? Wrench? What do you call it? I don't know. Let me know. Um, with a release here for this. This came with it. I've been looking in my toolbox for one of these so many times. It's a three-quarter to half-inch converter. That's actually what I picked that up for, and it came attached to that. So, that's a win. Uh, belt ratchet, or belt wrench. I don't do a lot of oil changes, but you know when the missus asks you to take the lid off a uh, can of pickles and you can't do it, you feel like less of a man? If you got the right tool, you don't have to feel that way. I don't remember how much that was, but it was cheap. More clamps. I think I paid five bucks for these. Not too shabby. Never know when you're going to need an extra clamp. A rubber mallet. So this, for a dollar, is what I'm going to use to get the plywood seated in here. Rather than a steel hammer. That way I have a better chance of not warping or distorting the edge of the plywood. Boom. A dollar. Win. Uh, we've got some more bits here, a lot of universal joints. I didn't have any uh, articulating universal joints. Uh, this is just another converter. This is half inch to three quarter. So there we go. I've just been totally redundant. But hey, if you need a waste of energy and because you can, I guess. Uh, so those, I don't even know how much that was. This one, I'm gonna have to put down the phone to show you. So this, this is the world's cleverest ratchet. I love this. I don't know when I'm gonna use it, but I'm sure I will. That's it, right? I think, I think that was a buck. Okay, what else we got here? Very fine needle nose pliers. I might put these to work today. Let's bring these over here. There you go. Uh, now these spreaders. Yeah. I'm sure I've needed these in the past, but I don't know what specifically I needed them for. But when I need them, I'll have them. Uh, heat gun, $10. I didn't even check if it... Oh, 1300 watt, 11 amp heat gun. Nice. 10 
box. Four ton jack. Now, it doesn't have the bar here, but I could figure something out. I got a three ton jack back there. I could probably use the bar off that if I need to. But yeah, that should come in handy at some point. And then this bad boy. Caliper. Zero to th six inch. You might remember that plastic bad boy I was using before. I probably don't need a digital caliper for what I'm doing. But uh, let's, uh, let's do a little comparison here. Old and busted. New hotness. Old and busted. New hotness. Needs a battery. I'll get a battery. But yeah, that was... I think I paid 10 bucks for that. Big time. Big time deal. So, that's it. That's what I got. Uh, what you're looking at here is 100 bucks all in. And I feel pretty good about that. Okay, now... We'll get onto the TV. Let me just plug in my soldering iron. No. Soldering iron is warming up. I have to make a job for those. Now, here's what 97 cents, what's 97? Alexa, what's 97 cents times two? 97 United States pennies times two is two Canadian dollars and 53 cents. There we go. For $2 and 53 cents Canadian plus another $8 in duties from Melser Electronics in no way sponsored, uh, you get these capacitors. So what you do when you're looking for your spare capacitor, you go online and this is where you actually need your calipers. Where did I put those guys? You may laugh at me for using calipers, but you actually need some pretty precise dimensions to know what kind of capacitor you need. So this one here I know is a 17 millimeter tall. And there's no better way to get the diameter of a cylinder than with capacitors, 10 millimeter diameter. Um, you can get the pin spacing, uh, other things to look at are markings on here. So it's got a thousand microfarad capacity, capacitance, I think that's what it is. Uh, meant for 10 voltage, uh, and 105 degree operating temperature maximum. So those are all the things you really need to sort of figure out what replacement capacitor to buy. And there are millions of components you can get online. So uh, just do some research, get some capacitors. 10 millimeter, look at that. I ordered the right ones. Uh, I'm going to take this circuit board off. Sure, if you can see that or not, but right there, those are the guys we're replacing. I have already removed them. I needed some flux to remove the solder there, it was nice and oxidized. Uh, so I'm going to one at a time, slowly and surely, replace these guys and see if that does the trick. 
I've got some uh, lead-free solder here. Uh, SN. Is that tin? I think that's tin. Oh, it's got lead. This has lead in it. Okay, don't breathe this stuff in. Another tool you're going to need, especially for removing capacitors, is a solder vacuum. Very, very useful tool to have. Uh, I got that at Messer Electronics as well. Did I mention we're not sponsored by them? Messer, if you're watching this, hey, hit me up. We got probably 12 subscribers by the time this thing hits the airwaves. So I don't think I'll be needing that today, but that's something you need for the disassembly process. Now, there is a specific way to install capacitors. So, that, that's the negative side. No marking there, positive side. Very important you get that right. Let's see, don't go anywhere. So here, again, not sure if you could see it, but on this side is the positive and on that side is the negative, which is, different than these. So these have a different orientation. The markings on the board also indicate, see that bold strip right there? That indicates the negative side of the capacitor. So that's the side. See that strip there? That's the side you feed through. There we go. Do a little side by side comparison of the new ones and the old ones. Here's the new one, here's the old one. You can see, oh, well, they're not quite the same height. Hmm. Hopefully, that won't be an issue. Um, still, that was a microfarad, 10 volt. Same operating temperature, 105 degrees maximum. Uh, there's anyone out there that knows components better than I do. Let me know if that difference in height is significant. Um, I did go for one that had a, a long life rating, which was probably unnecessary. But let me know if there's an actual difference to that. I'm, I'm curious to know that. I don't actually know that. But again, same process follows. Find your negative side. Throw your negative side in there, like so. I'm gonna use a little bit of tape. Actually, no, I'm just gonna hold my fingers here. I'm gonna bend these leads out. It should hold them in place. Now, Get my solder. Again, don't breathe this stuff in. Got some flux too. That's lead free flux.
Smooth went free as well. Huh. Alexa, can I use lead free flux with leaded solder? Mm. Mm. Alexa doesn't even know that one. Well, we're gonna give her a go. Let's use this stuff. It is corrosive. Don't get it on your hands. Also, uh, try not to eat it. Let's see. I can use... Use a zip tie. Could pick one of them. Better job, I guess. some flux on there that's going to help you solder and uh presumably it'll be fine with leaded solder now here's here's the conundrum i have i've got some unleaded solder but it's quite a bit thicker i don't want to overdo it I'm gonna use the thin stuff. Okay, so see how she goes. Looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do there should be some resistance across that. If my my high school shop class is correct. There should be resistance across these terminals. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. So. Hopefully that's in frame. of resistance across the leads. Let's do it this way. So there's no there's no circuit across there, so I haven't and no circuit across there. So I haven't accidentally bridged that part of the motherboard, so we should be okay. And these should be yeah, those are on the same side of the circuit as are those. So that means, what that tells me, because I'm just touching the lead, is that my solder connection from here through that solder, across this part of the motherboard to that solder up to here, I've got a good joint. I've soldered that well. Yeah, the resistance between that Actually less than this. No, there we go. I mean, it, it's essentially zero. So that tells me I've done a good job soldering that. Let's 
So, now, we take this, and we mount it back on there. I'm gonna skip that step, it's just screwing stuff in. If you can't screw stuff in, you go to another YouTube channel and learn how an inexperienced screwer in of things learns how to screw something in. You see the joke there was that an inexperienced carpenter is learning how to build that. So an inexperienced screwer in of things can learn how to, that's a joke. There's a close up of my handiwork. Looks pretty decent. Test well with the multimeter. Uh, don't forget to trim these bad boys off. So I'm going to do that now, and then I'll screw it in, and you'll see that right now. And there you go. She's in there. Uh, reconnected all these leads. Uh, I noticed this terminal. This doesn't stretch over there. I didn't really document, but. That bad boy doesn't have any leads. Uh, am I missing something? Is something loose and dangly? No. This board must serve a couple of different models, maybe. And maybe there's another driver. I don't know what that is. Maybe the backlight driver? Maybe there's another driver for bigger TVs or something. Uh, it's high voltage. And that's just a whole thing. Anyways. That's all in there. I've got the power lead in right now. It's not plugged in. Reminder, this is not an episode of Electro Boom. So when that goes in there, we're not hoping to see anything dramatic. So what I'm going to do, so I don't become a meme, hopefully. So I'm going to position this so that I don't have to touch it, and I could still do my diagnostic. There's the remote. Okay, everything's put back together. Moment of truth. Let's see if I can get this to turn on. Push the button once. Beeping noise. So this is similar to what I had an issue with when I got the TV. It would make that noise, then cycle off. Then make that noise and cycle off. It seems to have turned on. It's turning on. Have I unplugged anything? Hmm. That's all. Those are our new guys right there. not doing anything. I told you these guys were going to come in handy. I was poking around down here and those wires aren't going anywhere. What are you up to? I did forget to plug something in. needs to get plugged in. This guy can go back. And this guy can go right there. Maybe that did it. Moment of truth number two. Yeah. 
Yeah, baby. All right. Yeah. Woo. Eight bucks in duties and two bucks in parts. And that is a 44 inch TV. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna put the rest of the TV back together. I gotta put the shielding on and then the back of it, but this is a face of a pretty happy guy for 10 bucks and a little bit of like, not even know-how, but just willingness to try something. That's pretty cool. It's a very satisfying feeling. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm pretty pumped. I think, I think what I might actually do is I might sell this TV and split the cash with my buddy Sean who gave it to me. So if any of you out there want to buy a mint 44 inch TV, hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, get the bell on. Hey, I'm on YouTube. That's what I got to say now. Um, really had fun with this one. I'm feeling, feeling really good. The more you know.